My girlfriend cheated with a club manager during girls' night. Now I'm leaving her and moving on. I 28M, she 25F. A few hours ago, I just caught my girlfriend cheating on me with some random guy at a club. So some context, one of my girlfriend's friends sent me some snaps. They were at a club that they regularly go to for the last year and a bit. This wasn't surprising since my girlfriend loves partying with her friends. It had been one of these girls' nights that her and her friends have been having regularly. However, as I was going through the snaps, I noticed this guy in the background with her and they seemed to be getting quite close. Against my better judgment, I quickly checked my GF snap score and decided to send her a snap. I've never been the type of person to do this before. But I was practically choking on my heart at this point. Her score went up by 42 before she finally responded to my message about how boring the night was. So she was messaging someone else and just blatantly ignoring me. I said that it didn't look dull based on what her friend was sending me on Snap. She said she had to save face and make it look like she was having a good time in front of everyone. Then she sends another one and said she has a headache. I tell her that I can come and get her. She reads it and doesn't respond. Then I send another one and ask if she wants me to pick her up. And the snaps her friend was sending me stop and she stops posting them to her story as well. I snap her friend and ask if my GF is okay and if she needs a ride home but she doesn't open it. I tossed and turned in bed, my mind racing with worry and frustration at this point. Why wasn't she responding? Why did her friend suddenly stop sending snaps? Who the hell was this guy? The image of that guy in the club with her kept replaying in my mind, fueling my anxiety. I couldn't shake the feeling that something was off and that there was more to this girl's night than she was letting on. Finally, I decided to make the move to get the hell out of bed and drive to the club that she was at. Yeah, maybe I was blowing things out of proportion, but I needed to know. I'm not normally like this, but something just wasn't sitting right. The whole drive to this club, I was thinking, what would I find when I got there? Would she be okay? Is she actually sick? Am I making this all up in my head? Would I look like that crazy boyfriend? I mean, I had legitimately thought about marrying this woman literally a few weeks ago. Now, I'm not so sure. Everything felt so confusing. I had to make sure. I felt like an idiot as I pulled up to this dumb club until I walked inside and saw her sitting with her body locked with some guy I've never seen before in their swapping spit at the back of this club, sitting on some booth. Her friend was the first to see me and ran up to her to tell her that I was there. And then she basically pushes this guy away and tells him something, and he takes off but I'd query went. I walked up to them and she tries to tell me me it wasn't what it looked like and I said it was exactly what it looked like. And I'm asking who the guy was and she's trying to tell me there wasn't a guy there and that I'm delusional. I guess whatever we were saying to each other was looking pretty heated and her friend had told security to get me out of there and then security hauled me out of the club and I just drove home. Now I'm typing this on my couch and she's tried to call me but I haven't answered. She's texting me and saying that I'm blowing this whole thing up and that I don't trust her and I've totally lost it and I had no right just showing up like that. I'm going to pack up my stuff after this and head over to a buddy's place to crash there. I just don't even know what to think. I saw what I saw and I know that she was with a guy. Update 1. Just like that, after five years, it was all over. I had only been in one other relationship before her, and it didn't end well. I've been burned by life and she knew it. My high school girlfriend ended up tragically passing away. I wasn't anywhere near ready for a girlfriend after the pain of the first. And I was far too young. I guess maybe I jumped into this with her without even knowing who she was. I can still vividly recall the day we met. It was my first time at a music festival. My friends had actually dragged me to go and it hasn't really been my scene. I do love music, but I'm not a huge fan of crowds, which is why I never went out to the clubs with her, and so it just ended up turning into girls' nights. I spent the majority of the festival just sort of on the sidelines reading a book, and I was perfectly happy this way. Then suddenly she walks up to me, and she's got purple hair and a stellar body, and she's dressed up like a fairy, and she's got glitter all over. And just like the movies, there's a gust of wind, and I can smell her perfume. She says I looked lonely. Without hesitating, she sat next to me and suggested that we take turns reading my book aloud. And so our love story began, but now it's crashed and burned and it was all a lie. This devil woman totally laser beamed me in. I always thought she was out of my league. We were complete opposites, but that's what I thought brought us together. I was an introvert and she was the most extroverted person I had ever met. And honestly, she was so hot. It seemed like a perfect match as she dragged me out to festivals and events, while I preferred blending into the background with her by my side. She really pushed me out of my comfort zone and at the time I appreciated it. She even got excited about my hobbies, joining me on hikes and playing video games. But now I know that she was trying to turn me into someone I'm not, and I've realized that I don't even recognize the person I am anymore. 
I got this really intense opportunity to be an IT tech in my buddy's startup about two years ago, and it really pushed me to my limits. It was something I've always wanted to do, but it's been a lot of work. I worked long hours and a lot of overtime. As such, I really haven't had the desire to go out on the weekends or during the week to clubs and shows anymore. I just wanted to chill at home and decompress. But she wasn't really into that, but I didn't want to be the boyfriend who dragged her down and stopped her from doing what she loved, so she'd go out and stay in and play some video games. I found out who the guy is. I guess it's the manager of this club that she regularly goes to with her friends for these girls' nights, and he sets up the pub crawls and stuff, and I guess that's how they met originally. She went on a St. Patrick's Day pub crawl around the time that I got this new job. She's been claiming that he's gay, but a friend of mine says that he's a notorious fuckboy with the ladies. I don't believe a word my ex says. She was using girls' night as an excuse and was really just going to meet him this whole time. Anyways, it's been a week and I recently went to her place with two of my buddies to collect the rest of my belongings and pack up my tools from the workbench I had made there. Her mom was happened to be there and wasn't expecting me to tell her that I was leaving her daughter. She was totally taken aback. I told her, her daughter had cheated on me, and she looked like she was going to be physically ill. I said yeah, tell me about it. She instantly turned red and asked me if this was true. Well, my ex starts coming at me and telling me that I'm a puss and a liar, and that I can't be starting things with her mom and she's trying to tell her mom that I have no idea what I'm talking about and that there wasn't even a guy there, that I'm just insecure and looking for an excuse to get rid of her. Her mom started yelling at her right in front of me and asked her who she thought she was and how she could treat me like that. Her mom had known that I was considering marrying her because I had asked her and my GF's father for her hand in marriage. They literally loved me and honestly, I never had a great relationship with my own parents and they made me feel like their own. Anyways, her mom brought that up and told her that I was going to marry her and that she ruined it all and royally messed up her life and her future and that they wouldn't be helping her with her master's degree anymore. She was wanting to take her master's in psychology and they said they weren't going to help her with the place she was in right now either and that she had to take care of the bills on her own. Her mom tells her she's on her own. Well, all hell broke loose after that. They were yelling at each other while I was packing up the last of my stuff. I just had to leave. I couldn't deal with it. My buddies were great and helped me pack up my stuff fast and got me the hell out of there. I was moving into my buddy's place with him for a while until I found a place of my own. We also shared a checkings account, and I pulled all of the money out of that and put it into my savings. All of it. I also cancelled her car insurance because I was paying for that. There was also tickets for a few concerts that she had talked me into going that I really didn't want to, so I sold those. We were on the same phone bill too and I quickly went and cancelled that. But because of the billing period, I have to wait for the next month before she's off of it completely. Update 2. It didn't take her long to realize I took out my money from the account. She called and flipped out on me, saying that she wasn't going to be able to pay pills that month. I said whose fault was that? I blocked her number. Then she tried to contact me on Facebook and Instagram and I wasn't having it. She was posting pictures of her and that dude with his tongue down her throat and she was trying to send me sexually suggestive memes on Instagram. So he's gay but his throat is down her throat? How does that make sense? I went ahead and blocked her dumbass on there too. And then she was trying to talk to me on Snap about how I owed her money and I was making her homeless and how she got into a fender bender and it cost her a fortune. And that's how she found out the hard way that I had canceled her policy. Her friend that went to the club with her was trying to talk to me and telling me that I was a pause for treating my ex this way and leaving her high and dry. So I blocked her friend too. After that, I purged all of my social media of her friends and family. I can't lie. I'm still very much hurting. I'm now in my own place and I have my own space. I haven't started dating yet. I just still feel hollow as all hell. Update 3. It's hard to describe right now how I feel besides being angry slash jealous slash revenge slash shame slash wanting to just end everything all rolled up into one. I feel low guys, real low. It's hard when you picture your future with someone and then it all changes in a matter of minutes. I spent my days going through the motions, the pain of betrayal weighing heavy on my heart. The silence in my empty apartment was deafening, a constant reminder of the void she had left behind. I honestly thought it was forever. I'd tried to distract myself with work and hobbies, but nothing could fill the emptiness she had left in me. But then my buddy invited me to the gym once and I just eventually kept on going with him. Then I'd just started going by myself after I gained some confidence and going to the gym alone. I'd never been a guy who goes to the gym, but slowly I started to feel like myself again, like I didn't need someone else with me. That might sound lame but whatever. I've been feeling a whole heck of a lot better.
Her parents stayed in touch and told me that I was welcome to come by whenever I like and not to stay a stranger. They've went NC with her and they've totally cut her off. As her mom said, they didn't lend her money for her master's program and so she didn't end up going because she didn't have the money. They don't actually think she has a job right now because it was a 12-month contract position and they think she's staying with she that friend of hers that she went to the club with because she couldn't afford the place that we were at on her own. Her parents said she tried to stay with them but they refused. They said enough freeloading. They really do love me like a son and say that they wish I was their own. It sucks because I did and do love them but sometimes I feel like they're just a part of a past that I've outgrown. Before they went NC, she still tried to tell them that he was gay even though she was posting lovey-dovey things about him on social media, and it was nothing but innocent play that would go nowhere because he didn't like girls. She still denies to this day that anything happened between the two of them, and if anything did it must have been, because they were both drunk, and she didn't mean to do any of it, and it was harmless and she never meant to do it. She said she doesn't remember anything from that night anyways. And they said, well, that's nice, but what about the whole year prior? She's so deep down the rabbit hole she doesn't even know her up from down. A mutual friend of ours told me apparently she's not even with the guy anymore though. He dropped her like a hot potato. And I guess he actually got fired from that club for women on pub crawls and the female staff there. My buddy still has her on Facebook and she's posting videos and sob stories saying that she's lost everything and her family has disowned her and it's all because I've fed them lies about her and it's all one big misunderstanding and I'm the heartless one. Blah blah blah. Honestly, it has me thinking about our whole relationship and how many times she's actually cheated on me. She's gone to weekend festivals with friends before where I haven't talked to her, just because I wanted her to have fun and be immersed in the experience. Well, I'm wondering if she was really immersing herself all right. I don't know if I can even trust anything she's ever said to me. I went ahead and booked a few therapist appointments to see if it'll help and just get to talk to someone who doesn't know either of us or our relationship or our story. It will be nice to just talk to someone and I'm really looking forward to it. My own parents actually came to visit me and stayed for a week and it was really nice to see them and just have people in one place and have it feel lived in and cozy. Edit. Somehow she got a hold of me through this block number that I thought was my therapist's office calling back. She tried to apologize and she said that she hadn't cheated on me before this guy and it was only a few times and he was forcing her to do it after the first time. She said she only did it because I wasn't giving her enough attention and I was playing too much video games and I never liked to go out and do anything with her. She said I didn't make her feel pretty and that I didn't care about how I looked and she was embarrassed to go out with me and be seen in public. I can't even believe I listened to her long enough to hear it. But I hung up immediately after she started asking for another chance, and that she'll change and do whatever I'd ask. Anyways, I told her parents that she came around again and they actually laughed out loud and they she tried to go there too, but they didn't even let her inside. They told her if she came around again they'd call the cops. They said it looked like she had all of her belongings in her car though, so she's quite possibly living out of her car. That's what she gets. Now on to the next story. Story 2. Ex-husband cheated and left me for his 18-year-old assistant, then tried crawling back to me after 17 years. I, 49F, had an ex-husband named Jake, 53M. We have three kids, Kyle, 18F, Carter, 21M, and Knox, 25M. When I was pregnant with Kyle, he was cheating on me with his assistant, Abigail. She was an 18-year-old freshman in college at the time. She got pregnant with Lizzie a year later. When I wouldn't take him back, we got a divorce, and he married her. He then had two more kids with her. He paid child support, but that was it, and only see them once a month. However, if one of the kids asked him for something, he'll agree to get it, but wouldn't answer the kids' phone calls until he figured I had gotten what they needed. He wouldn't show up to any of the kids' sports games or plays, but if his aunts and mom would go, then he would be them. His aunts and mom are big-time lawyers and he needs their approval. His family is somewhat shallow. If someone isn't in a prestigious position, then they'll look down upon them. And any form of gossip is seen as negative and they'll yell at you for making the family look bad. So in front of them, Jake would brag about everything he does for the kids when in reality he does nothing. However, my kids see their family vacations and at first it hurt them, but they began to ignore it. He told them it was because I take them on two vacations every year and Lizzie only gets one. He just tells his family it was because the kids didn't want to go. However, during the Christmas party, Lizzie was talking to her great aunts about the upcoming trip to the Dominican Republic. Kyle then asked what they were talking about. She explained how the family was taking a trip and that their dad said they had other plans. Kyle explained how she had no plans and neither did her brothers so they'll love to come. Here's where the problems start my kids being that far away with their dad never sat right with me, so I went with them on vacation. His wife wasn't happy but me and his family are still close so it wasn't weird. 
So at a dinner my daughter and Carter go to a very prestigious college, and my oldest is in medical school. So his mom asked what's happening with all the kids. My daughter then explains how she was chosen for an internship for a tech company, and everyone congratulated her. But his mom then asked about Lizzie. My daughter told me that Lizzie has been bragging about a secret and everyone thinks that she got into her dream college so his mom was smiling ear to ear waiting to congratulate her. But Lizzie explains that she's pregnant. Everyone's face fell to the floor including Jake's. Everyone began to question Jake and Abigail's parenting. Jake then said that it was all on Lizzie because he parenting was a result of my children's success. I was tired of the lies and explained how he was never there unless his family was there in order to look good in front of them. They then asked if that was true and he tried to lie saying of course not then Kyle chimed in saying that he hadn't even invited them to this vacation and that he lies about everything and he's a shitty dad. Kyle stormed off and me and my sons ran after her. Later I got a text from Jake thanking me for ruining his family. I didn't text him back. I do feel bad because it probably wasn't the time or place. Ada has no consensus but, oop was voted NTA based on the comments. Top comments. Careless underscore league underscore 9494 NTA. If he wasn't such a shitty person there would be nothing bad to say about him. It's always wild to me when people blame other people for the consequences of their actions and refusing to lie for them. Still, underscore actuator underscore 8316 NTA, he dug his own pit and stepped in it. Update, February 23rd, 2024. First thing I want to answer is why did I feel the need to go with my kids? I'm best friends with his sister and have been going on trips with them since I was in high school. And I'm always a mom, so I'll never deliberately put my kids in a situation where I can't get to them. So, after the situation escalated, I got a call from his wife saying that she couldn't find my husband, and that he better not be in my room. I told her he wasn't, and she hung up. I then heard a knock on my door. I opened it up and Abigail barged into my room screaming that she he was in there. I let her look because I was confused as to what was happening. When she couldn't find him, she just sat on my floor silently crying. The situation was very awkward so I didn't know what to do and kicking her out didn't seem right so I just asked what was wrong. She explained that over the past 17 years Jake has been verbally abusive and claiming that she and Lizzie ruined his happiness. When she was 18 Jake promised that he would leave me for her, but every time she asked when he would lash out at her. So she got pregnant on purpose to trap him. But Jake tried to pay her off to get rid of it. But when I found out and filled for divorce he thought it was best to just go be with her. But every day he would berate her and call her useless, and apparently he was cheating on her constantly. She stayed because she dropped out of college and hadn't worked since she was at his office 18 years ago. She apologized for barging in and just left. I texted Jake that he might want to check on his wife because she seems unpredictable right now. I didn't get a text back so I assumed everything was okay, so I just went to bed for the night. But the next morning I woke up with a really long text from Jake so I'll just summarize what it says. He told me how sorry he was for stepping out on our marriage and that was the biggest mistake he ever made. He wished he was more involved with me and the kids and he hated seeing Lizzie and Abigail every day. He explained that's why he took on more hours so he could be away from them and that subsequently affected our kids. He said Abigail explained how she told me everything and that he was finally happy the truth was out so he could get away from them. He hoped that after all this time I could forgive him and we could repair our relationship. I explained to him that we have no need for a relationship. I'm remarried and the kids are grown so he should focus on fixing their relationship. He didn't text back. I explained to my kids that I'm going to leave early but they should enjoy the rest of their trip. Kyle didn't want to stay but the boys were fine staying. So me and Kyle are back home. I texted the boys and asked them how the trip was going and he explained that everything was a mess and Jake and Abigail weren't talking to each other. Top comments. You didn't make him look bad he did that all by himself. He's an ex for a reason. Remember that and keep it ex. Your ex is terrible and you dodged a massive bullet. Absolutely insane that he really thought you'd forgive him after all of this he's absolutely vile. He's living in his karma after learning that the grass is in fact not greener. I feel bad for his wife but if they do it with you, they'll do it to you. Happy that you've healed and moved on.